Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brick Workshop. You probably think this is a bit odd. I'm sitting outside, it's probably going to rain any minute now, but I want to show you uh, this. But first of all, let me explain the background. Now, for many years, we've been motorhome owners and we sold our wonderful aged Heimer when we moved house. But we've decided to get another one, a smaller one, and we've gone to the Irwin Heimer Centre in Stafford and made a decision. Now, whilst we're waiting for it to arrive, I'm doing a few preparation things, including this, which I'm about to describe. Now, we've been camping for many years, and the first thing you do is you hook up your electricity supply uh, to the post, which is near your pitch, and then connect it to your caravan, motorhome, or whatever. But some of us like to do most of the cooking outside. And so for many years, we've been using a little table, not unlike this, uh, where we've had a microwave, and then on top, two, two rings to heat up saucepans. And I thought I'd, I'd make one which is a little bit cleverer this time. And this one has provision for the electricity from the campsite to come in, a short lead to go away from it into the motorhome. And then on the other side, I've got a pair of sockets, one for the microwave and one for the little hob unit. So you arrive at the campsite, the first thing you do is connect up. So I'm connected up, the power's on. And at this stage, of course, you connect the short lead to the uh, motorhome or caravan. On goes the microwave. And next, the little mini hob unit. This is a ceramic one, really good bit of kit. And then plug them in. Now, the beauty of this is that all the steam generated from here is staying outside. It's rather nice to sit outside, perhaps under the awning, uh, particularly on a summer's evening. So it's, it's, it's a lifestyle thing as well, really. As a matter of interest, this hob unit is a two-ring Van Gogh, and it's a ceramic hob. Uh, we bought ours from Black's, uh, the microwave. You can get these from just about anywhere, one that suits you. When the curry's done, you need to take it out. Hopefully the rice is just about done as well. All that's left now is to serve it up and enjoy that glass of wine. Now, let me show you how I went about making this. Now, I've planed up all of my stock uh, to uh, the right dimensions. In my case, it's 18 by 30. And I'm now just getting set up to cut my panel pieces. You'll see where these go shortly. And there are four of them, and I can cut two from each of these two pieces of oak veneered MDF, which are on the bench now. Now, this is my Traxel cutting station top, uh, which I made with the path guide system. I've got a pair of path fences at the top there. I'm using my TS55 saw, and I'm all set up, ready to make uh, my cut. Now I'm cutting these three millimeters wider and three millimeters longer than I need, and you'll see the reason for this shortly. Now, my panel pieces are actually hollow sections, and there's going to be a frame inside here, and I'm going to have mitre joints for the outer part of the frame, and there'll be a pair of vertical pieces which will be there to take the screws which will secure the sockets in place. Because this is relatively flat, I'm not uh, using a straight edge to line this up at this stage because my bench will allow me to get that spot on. Glue down in here. And I've cut uh, two pieces to go uh, in here as the vertical pieces for this side. And you can see the holes where my screws could go. So I can now put some glue on there and fix those in. Put a piece of tape over there, making sure everything's nice and flat, which it is. So that's that frame all glued up. I'll leave that to dry. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the other one. Now I very carefully marked which is the front, top and outside of both of these. And in my case, the outside is there, the outside is there. And this is the one that takes the ordinary socket, which is biased towards the front. And this is the one that takes the pair of these 16 amp sockets, or in fact, one's a socket, one's a technically a plug, which are going here. And then the cables will run back towards the vehicle. I now need to stick the inside piece 
to each of these. And the reason for that is that once that's stuck on, we can then cut the holes so that the cable can run from the sockets, which will be on the outside here, through to the top up here. Now I've cut my stock for the legs and for the uh, rails that go between them on the long side and I'm now going to use dominoes to join them. Now if you don't have a domino machine it doesn't matter you could use dowels, uh, you could use screws all the way through uh, the legs into the rail, uh, whatever method you think appropriate. But I've got a domino machine and so that's exactly what I'm going to be using. In this stock which is 18 millimeters thick I'm using six millimeter dominoes and these are 40 millimeters long. So my domino set up I've got a depth of cut of 20, I'm on narrow and I've made a manual adjustment here to nine millimeters which is the half of the 18 millimeter thickness of my stock. And for the rails, to make it easier, I'm using the trim stop and it's very easy to set up. There are two little clamping wheels here and I've loosened this one. And as my stock is 30, through the sight gauge here, I can set this on 15 on each side. Just check that. Yep, nice and snug. And that's all those done very quickly. It's glue up time now and this should be pretty quick and easy with these dominoes. I'll just check this for square. <laughs> yeah. Super. Just do the other one. So the legs with the long rails are done. I'm going to put those to one side. I will give these a little sand off and I might break these edges slightly so they're not quite as sharp, uh, but those are fine. Um, I'm now going to go and look at these panels which we have started to make. Now we've stuck the inside piece of the veneered MDF onto both of these frames and it's now time to look at how we're going to pass the wire from the inside where it's going to be running under the top from one side of the table to the other uh, and then it goes through here to either a socket or a 16 amp connector like this. One needs to look at one's actual cable and what's going to happen is, is that the wire is going to pass through the inside here and then it needs to go down within this space here. Now my cable is just over nine millimeters in diameter so I've got a 10 millimeter force in a bit here and this is the top and this is the inside of what will be the table and so I'm now going to drill a hole here which is right on that edge as close as I can get it and it's going to go through just past the halfway point. So I've got my hole here which is on the inside and on this side I've made a little channel for the cable to run into this cavity here and I've just got to tidy this up with a chisel. And I think now that, that will pass through there okay and then it will go down as you can see into there and then into the cavity. And I think you can now see why we stuck this piece on uh, to the frame before we attempted to do this bit because most of this top rail has now disappeared because it's been cut through there. Now I've put a protective uh, rubber grommet uh, which fits into the hole uh, in this metal box and it protects the cable from chafing on the side of the metal. Because that is slightly proud of the flat surface here, on my piece of veneered MDF I've put a counter bore uh, sufficient to take uh, the part of the washer that sticks out and then a, a hole through the center for the cable. I'm now going to go ahead and glue uh, this panel on the other side now. And that's absolutely fine. I'm now going to leave that for that glue to dry. I'll get on with the other one. Now I've just rounded over the edges of the bottoms of these side pieces and what I haven't shown in the video is uh, the placing of this hardwood strip on these two pieces. Well that's those cut to length, now I'm going to get it set up to do the dominoes to hold this in place. Now if you don't have a domino machine you can screw it through the legs into, into this.
and I'll just check this for square. Absolutely super. And if you need convincing of this being square, just look at that. Well, that's the frame done, and I've just got to do the top now, and the electrics, of course. Uh, but at this stage, I'm going to put a coat of Osmo Poly X. It's the 3011 clear gloss, which I use, and that's going to go all over this and including the bottom of the legs. So I'm really pleased with that. It looks nice. Well, that looks uh, fine and uh, I'm happy with that. Well, I must say getting this first bit of cable in was much easier than I thought and I was really expecting it to be terribly difficult. So I'm just easing that through. Give it a little bit of a twist as I go. Keeping a, a reasonable amount of spare there just, just in case I can always trim this back, cut it off whatever. Now this has to go all the way to the other side and then down to there with a bit of spare. I'm just going to trim this back and then feed them down through. That's it. You can probably now see that I've got a pretty straight line there and the outer uh, protection of the cable goes all the way through to there and <coughs> the same at this end. So that's fine. All I've got to do now is feed an extra piece down through here because of course we've got two sockets and they're in, uh, in parallel. I can see them there. That's it. And now I'm able to get these uh, back covers screwed in place. I did actually check that they're in a line so they look nice and tidy. Those are good. Now all I've got to do is put the actual socket or plug part into these and then I'm done. Now let me remind you that if you're going to do any electrical work you have to be competent enough to do it. You have to be authorised to do it, depending on the rules and regulations in your country. And if necessary, you need to get a professional electrician to check your work after it's done. That's it. That's good. So that's the first one done. The second one's going to be identical to this. Now, my rationale for having the one which is the male here, now this one is the one where you bring your live in from the mains on site goes into here and this is the lower of the two because that cable is going to disappear on the ground somewhere uh, and the cable that would go into here is the f is the male one which goes to your motorhome or caravan and this is a female socket like so and then your power from here will go to your motorhome caravan or wherever so all we now have to look at is what's going on at the other end. And this is the socket for the connection of the microwave or whatever you might have that you want to use outside. And that's all those connections done on this one. And that's it. All I've got to do now is fix the top. And that's it. It weighs less than five kilos. And when the top goes on, which is fairly lightweight plywood, I'm not uh, expecting it to go over the five kilo. Now for the top, I've got a piece of ordinary plywood, which I've put an edge on here, which you can see. I've reinforced these corners uh, just with a little triangular piece of wood here. I've got two uh, strips in the middle, one here and one there, which fit into the inside of the frame. And that allows me then to screw this to the main uh, frame with the legs and that allows the top to be removable. I've put one coat already of this Osmo Country Colour High Solid 2404 Fur Green and it may be difficult in this light to see the effect but it is absolutely lovely and that will protect it from spillages and the odd splash of rain that may fall. And you see how, how well this covers on this unpainted piece of white wood here. And uh, if you wish, you can put this on perfectly well uh, with a roller. In fact, I say perfectly well, I think it actually goes on really nicely with a roller. Now, I've made this shelf, which is going to fit in between here. And 
The idea of this is that when you, you don't need it, it's packed away somewhere. When you do need it, it's in there. Now, in order to keep this stable, there are just two little strips of wood on the inside, which sit on the inside of these two rails. And I think for this piece, I only need one coat. It's just to seal the wood. Well, now we're at the very last stage now. The top is finished, but I've just got to do one more thing, and that is to put a little bit of conduit between these two gaps here, which is where the cable runs. So I've bought some cheap and cheerful conduit. It's got a sticky back. Hardly needs it in this case. Make sure it goes from one place to the other, like so. Push it down in place. And now I can put the legs on, screw the screws in, and then it's finished. Just encouraging that cable down into the slot. That's fine. Happy with that. That's it. And that serves to protect that cable should it get knocked in any way, shape or form. And of course I've got my little shelf now which will fit in like so. So now I've got room for a microwave. On top of that, uh, two rings and a place at the side for a saucepan or whatever and a little space under here to put things whilst I'm cooking. I'm rather pleased with that. Many thanks for watching. Take care.